Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. So welcome to this forum on rubber and cacao. So today our speaker is Dr. Nathaniel Bantayan. So Dr. Nathaniel Bantayan is a forester by profession. He finished his Bachelor of Science degree in forestry in the University of the Philippines at Los Banos in 1984. So bata pa si sir. In 1990, he finished his Master's of Science in Tropical and Applied Silviculture, Forestry Ergonomics in Wagen Nigen University in the Netherlands. He got his doctorate degree in Engineering Participatory Decision Support System from the University of Melbourne, Australia in 1996. So, Dr. Bantayan has written several articles related to forestry. He was senior author of six articles mostly on geo database development GIS and development of tools for assessment and monitoring of biodiversity. He was also junior author of 16 published articles related to watershed, estimating above ground biomass, land cover changes, and soil erosion, among others. At present, Dr. Bantayan is a professor seven at the University of the Philippines at Los Banos College of Forestry and Natural Resources, and at the same time, Director and Park Manager of the Makiling Center for Mountain Ecosystems. So Dr. Bantayan will be presenting a paper entitled GIS-Based Inventory and Sustainability Assessment for Rubber and Cacao in Major Production Areas of the Philippines. So ladies and gentlemen and students, let's all welcome Dr. Nathaniel Bantayan. Good morning, everyone. Do we have uh, um, foreigners in the group? So I can speak uh, Bisaya or Tagalog. First of all, thank you for this opportunity to make this presentation. Uh, this is a two-year project, and uh, we still have to submit our terminal report. What you see is not in front of you is not about the project. It's about what we did a few years ago with Picard. No? And... Uh, our, our role in life is really to visualize. No? Because our motto is, if it's not on a map, it doesn't exist. No? And from, from the commercial, you know, from the business point of view, you only know who you talk to. So that the price is dictated. And kawawa naman yung, yung seller. No? So, in, in the previous project that we did, we wanted to level the playing field. So we looked for all of those sites that were sources of raw materials for furniture and handicraft. No. So, okay, so next please. Yeah. Ah, na ako. Okay. So initially, we tried to go to the entire country where rubber and cacao are planted. Because we were advised that, you know, this rubber is a very, very potent uh, commodity. And we could be a uh, world player, no? Add to that cacao, no? Uh, climatically, uh, the Philippines is, uh, you know, suitable for cacao. But, of course, we also wanted to find out where those other areas can be planted with Cacao, including rubber. No? So our objective was, where are these? No? Where are these in the country? And put this down on a database. And since, again, we are a visualization group, we use technology, and the technology we call uh, GIS. So one, we wanted to generate a national database. Second, also, we wanted to do some modeling, no? Some modeling. So, based on current condition, where the rubber and cacao plantations are, take the characteristics of those sites and look for other sites having the same characteristics. And we call them possible expansion areas. So, at the end of the presentation, we'll try to show them, no? So, uh, one, develop the database, Identify the suitable sites for expansion, and also find out ano ba itong mga are they resilient? 
to climate change. No? So we also wanted to find out those things. And one very important thing is we did not want our results to gather dust in the shelves. No? Very deliberately, we wanted to deploy the data. We wanted to give the data to the concerned LGUs and the plantation owners. So uh, during the last few weeks and months of the project, we went around to the different LGUs and gave the data and gave trainings. No? And uh, we, have, we have a training manual that we give to the LGUs. No? So susundan lang nila. So I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Okay, so two things. No? Uh, we were focusing on cacao and rubber. And during the mid-evaluation, uh, no? mid-project evaluation, Sabe, uh, dito na lang tayo sa major production areas. But still, nine project sites pa rin sila from Mindanao and Palawan. And uh, we went especially to Basilan. No? Talagang pinuntahan namin ng Basilan. And uh, dun kasi nagsimula talaga ang rubber production sa Pilipinas. No? Sinimula ng mga Amerikano, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. Okay. So, rubber. Rubber is uh, a big industry right now and we, we're seeing over the years na marami nang nag-go into rubber. From a for forester's perspective, I like rubber. Why? Because you don't cut rubber. You only tap the resin. So if you ask me, plant rubber. No? Especially those in areas, of course, where they are suitable. And we also looked at cacao. No? Cacao sh likes shade. No? Gusto niya ng uh, medyo ma lilim na lugar. No? So you, usually they're intercrop, pwedeng ano rin, pwedeng uh, monocrop. But Kailangan shaded areas, no? Okay. So, one, we generate the database. We look for those contact persons. We went on a visit. Why did we go to a visit? Sabi namin, why do you use this planting, kumbaga, uh, distance? Why do you plant on this area? No. So, we wanted to know the current practice of plantation owners and later on, yun na nga, yung possible expansion areas. And of course, the maps. No, uh, Coropleth, i-google na lang natin yung Coropleth, but it's just a black and white map. No? Pwede i-photocopy, kita mo pa rin. No? Okay. So these are some of the photos. No? This is in Palawan, in uh, Davao, uh, Com Comval, and Basilan. Ito, Basilan ito. Okay. Um, okay, so what did we do? When we went out to visit, meron kaming GPS. No? So sa GPS, pwede nating imapa yung mga lugar na yun. Not only that, no? so i-attach namin yung information sa GPS doon sa characteristics ng plantation. Sino ang owner, kailan tinanim, anong age na, Anong planting distance, anong characteristics ng lugar, etc., etc. No? And uh, as I mentioned, these are the attributes. No? So, also we did that for cacao. Ano ba yung mga important parameters para malaman namin ano ba yung suitable habitat dyan, no? Niche modeling is just the suitability. No? Ano ba yung, kumbaga, Yung mga uh, professionals natin, you look for your niche, di ba? What, are, what is that set, unique set of parameters, environmental characteristics that will let you thrive? No? Well, for rubber and cacao. No? So, we looked at several factors and we based those factors on existing ones. No? 
the BSWM, the DA, they have a set of parameters na ito ang parameters and this is good for rubber, this is good for cacao. No? But during our visit, we tried to enhance those parameters. No? And more than that, we tried to generate maps for each of those important parameters. Dahil yun nga, visualization tool tayo. So we looked at rainfall, so generated the rainfall map, temperature down to the soil characteristics. Each one, we generated a map. And then, kinumpere namin sa existing, uh, we call it the Rubber Production Guide DA and Kagao Production DA 2015-2013. So, kinumpere namin yan. No? And based on that, we generated what we call a model. No? So, here we have the input layers. A layer is a map. No? Uh, we, we scaled it, reclassify, meaning tinanong namin yung plantation owners, what do you think is the contribution of, of each of this? No? Based on experience, and then we process it, so nagkaroon ng potential areas. Yung mga tanong namin sa mga plantation owners themselves, yun ang mga weights na inattach namin sa bawat mapa, sa bawat parameter. So that we are given possible values. So these are the areas, the provinces where the major plantations are found. Notice these are the weights. No? So for instance, for elevation according to the group of Agusan Sur, out of 100 is 15.5. According to the group of Palawan, hindi siya, less than 10. So for each set of plantation owners, in each area, iba ang kanilang perception sa contribution ng bawat parameter dito. Ang perception nila na importante dahil yun ang basis based on their experience na maganda, productive yung lugar nila. So, this is this set of weights are very important. So, we ask them directly. And ito ang aming assignment na binigay sa bawat mapa na ginawa namin. No? So, that's um, cacao and the previous one was rubber. No? Cacao and rubber. So, di different set of weights. So, so what happened? So again, uh, very briefly, pinakita, papakita ko lang yung mga photos. Ha? I don't have much time. So we went around uh, in Agusan Sur, Bayugan, also in Bayugan, Cacao. Cacao also, also in Agusan Sur. Rubber farm in uh, Prosperidad, Agusan Sur. Rubber in Esperanza, Rosario. Rubber in Talacogon, also Agusan Sur. Uh, rubber in Lamitan. No? Uh, where, where it all started, no? the, the co-op called Scarbid Sea. This area used to be the property of the University of the Philippines. Dito talaga nagsimula yung rubber production, essentially. No? Many, many years ago. Larbeco in Lamitan. Uh, Isabela City, where they have the, you know, the Menzi. No? Does, does Menzi ring a bell? Anyone? Menzi? Manila Bulletin. Yeah? Exactly, no? Okay. Uh, we also went to Bukidnon. Also in uh, areas in Bukidnon, Dangkagan, Davao City, Comval. Andiyan pa si Abi. Oh. Um, oh, by the way, may I recognize our colleague from Basilan, no? Siya yung nag-alaga sa amin doon, no? 
Salamat po. At nandito tayo. <laughs> okay. Dava Oriental, Cotabato, no? Um, by far the biggest, no? Uh, PPC. PPC, Puerto Princesa, sa Palawan na ito. No? Espanyola in Palawan. Okay. So, kinuha namin yon, and then we developed the training manual and then we gave it all to the LGUs. No? So, capacity building, this is in Palawan. Uh, Agusan Sur. Bukidnon. By the way, we have another request from Bukidnon na mag training pa sila, no? And we're asking uh, Picard for the budget for that. Okay. Uh, we went into FGDs, no? In Basilan, in Palawan, and uh, of course, Zamboanga, Sibugay. Ito yung mga tanong na uh, binibigay namin sa kanila, no? Okay. So, the results of the models can be expressed by municipality. And you can just imagine how useful this is. No? We give it to the municipality, merong mapa, makikita na saan ba ito pwede. No? So sa kanilang uh, land use planning, napaka, napaka useful. No? So this is for Agusan Sur. And I'm sorry, uh, ito yung uh, pangalan ng LGU. No? Welcome. Please take forestry. No, talk to me later. Huh? So Agusan Sur, Basilan, no, uh, Bukid Non, Comval, Davao Sur, Davao Oriental, Palawan, and this now is for rubber. No, Bukid Non, Comval. Davao Sur, Davao Oriental, Palawan. No? But uh, look at Palawan. What is unique about Palawan? Uh, for, the, for the second year in a row, Palawan is the most beautiful island in the entire world. Number one, diba? Number one, because of that, among others. No? But just to tell you, walang high suitability for rubber in Palawan. It struck us. Bakit kaya? No? And malamang, Palawan is highly forested. And we are not going to clear up forest for rubber. No, we're not. Uh, kaya yung, yung model namin, very strict. No? There are restricted areas. So, tanggalin na namin agad pag existing forest. Siyempre, pag built up na yan, hindi mo naman gagawing rubber plantation pag built up na. So, there are already existing land use and land cover that cannot be converted. So, yung natitira, yun ang mga possible possible ha expansion areas but not only possible per se but med merong high highly suitable moderately suitable low suitability no at least 3 so palawan um, i'll show the uh, the summary table in a little while no so north katabato okay and sambuanga sibugay so, summary. Okay. There is an increasing trend and interest in rubber cacao. And we're seeing that in Region 4A and Region 2. Okay. Farmers are encouraged to plant when they are part of a cooperative. We found out that if people are organized, they are stronger. And... You know, the, the personal feeling that I have a neighbor, I have a member that I can lean on. 
So, pag mag-isa lang, mahirap yan gumalaw, no? So, when you are in a co-op, especially when you are undertaking something new, mahirap mag na uh, bagong-bago para sa'yo, no? There is increased interest in cacao farming because of the international market. And um, we're finding out there's uh, te technical assistance being made available, no? Provinces may exhibit moderate and low suitability, but uh, with proper management can provide profitable harvest. Ibig sabihin, when the model says low suitability, it doesn't tell you not to go into it. It is just telling you there is an investment that you need to undertake. No? So in terms of investment, if it is low suitability, high investment. If it's high suitability, less investment for you. Diba? Mas kaunti ang iyong ilalabas na kumbaga, pera. Um, okay. So we're finding out there could be more no? from this. No? So this is the present. And uh, based on our inventory in the study sites, these are the values. And most of them in North Cotabato, Sambuanga, Sibugay. No? And production-wise, it's different. Some of them, one ton, one metric ton per hectare. Some of them, less. No? So here you can see productivity. No? We don't have data on Palawan, unfortunately. So that's for rubber. For cacao, these are the productivity values. No? And the present, hindi pa masyadong malaki, di ba? Compared to rubber. Now, let's look at the modeled values. These are potential areas. Potential. And it's telling us percentages. We did not give uh, hectares, but we just tried to show how much of the province are suitable for expansion. So it, this one is saying, for instance, in Bukidnon, 11% more of the province can be planted with cacao in this case. Or 10% more of Davao Oriental. About 11% more of Basilan. No? In terms of high. Pero napakalaki ng moderate. No? So 72%, 63%, almost 60% here. Okay. This, this gives you know, a, lot, a lot of uh, insights if I were a businessman or if I were a local government unit. No? This is how much of my local government unit no, can be planned for this particular commodity. So that is cacao. This is rubber. Almost 30% in Comval. No? Okay. So, we recommend further consultation to refine the parameters. But right now, we have something to, uh, to base our decisions on. No? Because we now have a model. No? Because there is a technology that allows us to visualize areas in our territorial jurisdiction that can be devoted to these two commodities, rubber and cacao. Okay? Um, we need support from government. For instance, areas that have been identified are highly suitable for plantation establishment. As I mentioned earlier, continued training. And uh, the province of Bukidnon is waiting for us to go there. And lastly, we cannot stop with rubber and cacao we move on to other commodities and other areas. 
we can do the modeling for the entire country. No? Looking for those areas. This can now be the basis for, you know, for if I were NEDA, in fact, no? Or if I were the LGU, ito ang sabi ng model, let's find out. Otherwise, it's all available yung lugar, magtatanim ka, mag magagalit ka kasi maliit ang production. Why? In the first place, there was no modeling done, no? Okay, so I think I think uh, the the message of the the project, no, it's really visualization, no, finding out what we have, no. That's why it's really an inventory. So what we did was find out what we have right now. What are the current realities, no? What are the current practices, and then perhaps look for other areas that are suitable for at least rubber and cacao. No? So um, I hope the, we were able to impart the message. Again, I, as I'd like to say, again, ayaw namin maging report lang yung aming ginawa. Kaya umikot po kami, hindi lang, hindi lang training manual ang binigay namin. We gave them the data that came from them in the first place. We gave it back to them, but in processed form. Processed, we gave them software. Open source, download lang sa internet. No? If you've heard of Quantum, it's uh, you know, very easy to use. But, you know, let's use something that is freely downloadable. No? And we have, we have the steps on how to use this. We do not use data that is not yours. So, yung, kung ano yung data na LGU, we gave them data for that LGU. Kung ano yung laman. So, we have nine sets of this no? that, as, that are specific to that particular LGU. So, uh, on that note, Again, thank you very much to the OSTP card for this opportunity. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Doc Nell. Palakpakan natin si Doc Nell, no? And thank you for that very uh, brief and incisive presentation. We saved almost uh, half. No? Like start kanina, almost uh, 20 minutes late, and then we save. So kaya nating hanggang 10 o'clock ay mag-question and answers tayo. Okay. So, ang isa pa palang background nito, Doc Nell, na kung bakit uh, ginawa natin ito, kasi may problema yung ating uh, pagtinanong o gaano nakalaki yung ating kakao or gumahan at paano natin planuhin kung ano pa yung gagawin. Walang datos na may bigay. Okay. So, yun yun. Kaya nagsimula tayong uh, i-commission ang UPLB. Now, doon sa concern kanina, yung technotransfer, yung imingi ng pera na naman sa Picard. Na naman eh. Actually, meron kaming program. Uh, Picard is not uh, conducting R&D. We are into investment. Uh, R&D direction, setting directions for R&D, tapos investment. So, meron kasama sa roadmap, Doc Lai, yung technology rollout. So, sabi nga, we don't want to have this uh, in in the cobwebs uh, only. So, we encourage Tocnel to prepare yung technology rollout. So, hindi na sa amin yun, nasa kabilang division na yun. So, Techno Transfer and Promotion Division. So, uh, part two. Okay. Uh, we can entertain as many as two to three questions. Uh, who wants to shoot the first question, sir? Please identify yourself. From? DUST? Oh, yes. Wow. Provincial Science and Technology Center. So uh, I would just like to uh, ask uh, Dr. Bantayan, okay, about, I, I know that Cebu and or the Visayas is not considered in the, as one of the scopes of the study, but we have also cacao production as well as coffee production and one of the factors that influence the farmers in planting cacao and coffee 
is because it has become one of the high value crops that are promoted by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources of the National Greening Program. Uh, so those are actually one of the, uh, I think, major influence. So uh, were you, uh, the, were this, are this, uh, did the study uh, able to consider also that factor with uh, the ENR? Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. The de Department of Environment and Natural Resources manages more than half of the entire country. That's about 52%, no? If we consider 300,000 square kilometers, more than 150,000 square kilometers. Doon nakatutok ang NGP, the National Greening Program. We focused on those areas na merong tenure. So may plantation owner, no? Now, a good question to ask the NGP, wa, what is the next step after cacao and coffee? Dahil NGP is to plant. Uh, after that, ano ba? No? So, di ba? Kasi ang objective lang is to put cover on the ground. Whatever it is. I mean, hindi naman. Merong mga Meron mga prescribed in this case. So, tinanggap na accommodate yung coffee and cacao. So, in that case, there needs to be a, a complete cycle. No? So, kaya nga meron kaming production. No? But, uh, pwedeng i-ano yun, pag-aralan din. No? Uh, actually, in addition, meron kaming bagong napondohang project. It's about 4.8. 7 million for two years. Uh, kasi meron ang gap, uh, we recognize yung gap. So meron kaming pinundohan sa ERDB, Ecosystems Research and Deve Development Bureau. Uh, kasama na dito yung coffee. So species site matching, ang focus naman nila yung mga CBFM areas. So pagsasamahin natin yon, and then so that we can have a, 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 a good picture of this, uh, uh, these crops. In, in fact, Doc Neil, yung coffee halos... Uh, in configuration niya, kung may cacao, pwede pwede ang coffee. O parang ganun ang assumption. So, dahil two years lang binigay namin, uh, so two crops ang <laughs> rubber and cacao. Okay, next question po. Uh, sirs, dun, unang nagtaas uh, ng kamay. Uh, from? Pa, kindly introduce yourself po. Hello po. Uh, ako po si Vic Subandal po. Uh, from? Kabiti. Kabinte. Pero po may area, yes po. May area po kami sa Nakar po. Yun ang na gusto ko po malaman kung saan po tayo makakuha ng mga seedling ng kakao na sa ngayon ay hindi pa po nakarating doon sa lugar namin. So kaya kailangan po namin na ma i bigay sa amin ang tamang information kasi Sige. yun po ang sasagutin ng aming yung, ISP manager sa kakao. Yes. Uh, uh, Doc Nel, steady ka lang diyan. Halika Ma'am Tina. Uh, magandang umaga. Yung pong mga seedlings, actually DA, meron po sila, specifically for Quezon, meron sila dito sa may parting chaong. So, pwede naman po, uh, you can siguro get in touch with DA regional offices for su some supply of uh, available cacao seedlings, lalo po yung grafted. We do recommend po yung mga grafted for quality production po of cacao. You you approach Montina mamaya. Oh, Tunin niyo yung sige. Okay. Uh, address. Salamat po, salamat. Okay. Yes. Uh, si Sir na naka-green po. Sorry. And then yung girl doon. Yung mas bata. Oh, sir. Uh, sir, hello Miguel po from the OST Region 2. Gusto kong itanong kay Sir Doc Neil yung ano, uh, sa rubber. Kasi po ang rubber tree ay kinonsider na ng uh, uh, ano namin, probinsya ng Isabela and even region 2 as a whole to as one of the industrial crop na pwedeng i-adapt natin. Uh, actually, the provincial government and even the, the office of the, the PICC, si Governor Lim, ay pinapunta po kami sa Vietnam and even Cambodia to study 
the trends of uh, this uh, rubber tree plantation. So, gusto namin talaga, hindi ko kasi nakasali, sir, doon sa study ninyo, although I'm happy na kasama pala ang region to as a possible expansion for rubber tree plantation. Uh, napakahalaga po talaga ang rubber tree sa amin dahil uh, although we are afraid, sabi ka ng mga ibang ano natin doon na uh, ang region 2 po ang pinakamaraming uh, bisita na bagyo na duwadaan doon. Kaya natatakot din itong mga leaders natin i-adapt itong rubber tree. But uh, sabi namin, we should put it try na iano natin itong rubber tree. So gusto ko namin sana, sir, gusto ko sana na pwede pong iano natin ang region 2. Uh, isali dun sa sa ano ninyo. Sige, sige sir. Thank you. Ganito thank po you, ang sir. sagot. Uh, ako na po sa sagot. No? Uh, last month, we have just approved a pro project to look into yung concern. Uh, this was proposed by the Phil Robert Technical Working Group na pag-aralan kung ano ba yung sitwasyon ng mga goma na itinanim outside of the non-traditional areas which is outside of Mindanao. Kasi ayaw natin na na baka ma mapaso ang gobyerno na pinapabayaan na tanim lang ng tanim ng tanim ng goma. So the project is uh, for will run for two years and will start this August. Uh, 4.6 million yung total budget niya and will be done by DA Zampiark. Kasi ang pinakamalaking gumahan sa Pilipinas ay nasa Zamboanga Peninsula. So this will be done by uh, Roger Bagaforo, yung project leader. So they'll, they'll go into these areas, tignan kung tama ba yung mga spacing, tama ba yung pagkakatanim, kasi issue mo, bagyo. So kailangan, medyo nakatago siya. So the aspect, yung parameter ng aspect should be totally considered. Pwede, pwede magtanim, kasi tropical man yun. Nasa tropics man tayo, pero the typhoon should be considered. Sa Mindanao, binabagyo na rin, but still the rubber are, are still there. In fact, Nag-harvest na sa Ifugao. Nag-harvest na sa some of the... Sir, by governor? Adyaw ba yan? Basta meron na nag-harvest doon sa sa northern uh, uh, Kalinga. Mm -mm. Okay, meron na rin. So yun yung gusto nating malaman para maintindihan natin na saka na it should be done scientifically para masabi natin, oops, hindi pwede. So pwede, pero ito yung mga menu. So, okay, uh, last question from the lady, yung bata. Gusto nating marinig yung, yung uh, pananaw ng kabataan. Sige ma'am. Um, good morning po. I'm Patricia Mangila from St. John Fisher School po. Um, my question is, according po dito sa handouts, um, Cavite and Laguna are considered po for cacao plantation. How is that going to be possible if majority of Cavite and Laguna are already commercialized? That's a very good question. And uh, ang ibig sabihin, there are landowners interested in the crop, in, in planting. No? So, if I am a landowner, medyo nakatiwangwang yung lugar, I go into it. No? So, it, kailangan din itimpla ng province kung siya ay mag industrialize sa totally no because that is not a good option no so kaya meron tayo nakikita na mga lugar in Cavite and Laguna na not industrializing but opting to establish those plantations for Rubber, specifically rubber. No? Okay, so uh, uh, we need to uh, wind up. Uh, pasensya na doon sa mga gustong magtanong. But Doc Neil will still be around to answer your questions. And at least nahabol natin yung oras. No? So we would like to thank yung mga friends natin dyan. Nakikita ko, mga taga DLSU DASMA. Uh, kahapon, nandito rin kayo. Siguro bukas, nandito rin kayo. Uh, maraming mga schools, no? Uh, from Bicol University, uh, mga taga-DUST, family. Sino mga taga-DUST dito? 
Oh, ang dami. Oh, hindi lang kayo, mga ka- kapatid namin sa DWST ay interesado. TIP, ACB, WSC, St. John, uh, Iris, Adamson U, Kabsu, and so many other schools. So salamat sa pagdalo. And with that, we would like to uh, call on Doc Lai and Ma'am Tina, please, to award or give a token of appreciation to Doc Nell. Pwede ba dito, photo ops? Dito. Sir, dito sir. Okay, si Doc Nell, ah, uh, kayong mga kabataan, idol natin yan. One of the ten young scientists in 2000... Three. 2001, ano ka? <laughs> Papabata ka pa. <laughs> okay. Uh, pero hanggang 40 years old lang, ah. Pag before 40 years old, dapat uh, maraming na kayong na-research. Okay, so Picard uh, presents this uh, certificate of appreciation to Dr. Nathaniel Sibantayan for serving as resource person during the Technology Forum on GIS-based geotagging of existing and identification of suitable sites for cacao and rubber plantations conducted this day as part of the NSTW for 2017 celebration given this 13th day of July 2017 at PTTC. Pasay City signed uh, Dr. Reynaldo V. Ibora, Acting Executive Director. Sir, oh, palakpakan natin si Doc Neil. Oh. At saka yung ating token. Uh, ano bang laman yan? One year supply of... But... Trust daw... Sorry ah. <laughs> one, year ka- one year supply of... of cacao sa Jollibee. <laughs> Bahala na kayo. <laughs> Okay, so maraming salamat at uh, Doc Neil sa ulitin. Oh, palakpakan natin. So thank you sa mga nag po. Sila, okay. Uh, Secretariat, uh, Dang, mayroon ba silang uh, snacks or what? Okay, Sa- saan isa serve yan? Sa baba. Sa baba po yata yung ating uh, s- snacks. Okay.